Hi, this is Brian from Gerard PA, and today I'm going to be talking about the Marx electronic switch track. And we've had some questions about the functionality and how you hook these things up. And basically, I'm going to go through a little tutorial here to show how these tracks work and how to connect them. And first of all, there are three leads. Anyone who has these uh, switch tracks have seen the three leads here. And you actually use a controller, a Marx controller that has a three wire connection and I'm going to get to, into that a little bit later on in this tutorial and obviously there's a housing here for the solenoid and these are pretty durable switch tracks and I'm going to talk about in my next segment a little bit how I've taken these apart and you can see here and here and if I flip this over real quick how I've actually installed number four machine screws just to make these serviceable so go over that in the next section okay firstly if you'll notice on this switch track it actually has a small nut machine screw and nut holding the, the two different metal plates the top and bottom together and I actually added those after I had drilled out the press rivets okay and if you don't need to take them apart uh, if you want to keep the, the keep it original that's probably your best bet but I wanted to uh, repaint the, uh, the, the covers, the housings on here. And I found some paint to match real well with the stock color. That was a, a gloss or cherry red. And uh, came out pretty good. And I wanted it to look nice on the layout. Okay, now what, what I did, and I'm going to show you via this mechanical switch track, is I drilled out in those two spots. Now again, this is not the same thing as that electronic switch track, but I've already done all these. I drilled out the two press rivets. Okay, there's one there and one there. And if you flip this over, you see on the back where it's recessed, it really shows that. And what I did is I drilled that out on, on the uh, electronic switch tracks. I drilled those press rivets out with a 7 64th drill bit. And what that does is that it, uh, it properly clearances that for a number four machine screw and nut and I did use a lock washer under here and it's they're so small and if from this profile you can see they're so small and low profile it's not going to interfere with the train and what's nice too is if you ever need to service the track again if you have a wire problem because some of these are really antiques uh, you can get that apart very easily and also to, in order to paint this properly uh, this this has bend over tabs on the inside which I'm going to show when I take it apart I wanted to get that off the uh, actual plate okay so I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next step okay I'm gonna begin the disassembly and I'm just using a nut driver to uh, pull apart the hardware that I had already installed and again this is uh, something I did drilling out the original press rivets so I can get into the track internally and see what was going on and again this is kind of tricky to hold the camera and try to get these apart but I'm taking those out and again if you needed to pull yours apart or if you wanted to repaint that housing separately uh, you would have to drill out the press rivets so let me uh, be good if I could mount this little camera I have here and I'll move on here I have removed my two number four uh, machine screws and nuts and again if, if you had a stock one and you, you felt the need to take it apart you would drill out the press rivets but now I can take this apart actually and I'm going to try to do it with one hand here. I'll show you while I hold this camera. And that's the bottom plate. And you don't see much there. Uh, there's a couple pieces of insulating electrical tape. And that is just to make sure you don't get the wire shorted out on the frame, the hot side, because that would definitely short out your transformer or power supply that you're using. Now, underneath the top plate, again, here it is. The top plate. Underneath, here's what we're looking at. And uh, let me kind of get organized here. But the underside here kind of gives you an idea of what where those wires are going. And again, and you can see these wires are a little beat up, but the uh, wire they use is actually coming directly off the windings on the solenoid. And they're pretty, they're, they're pretty small. And they're using that old fabric style 
insulation so I didn't want to disturb these on another one I did put a, a piece of electrical tape I folded it over to insulate it these ones aren't too bad even though they're they, they get there's a little bit of rust there but the uh, the insulation is not compromised so I didn't really go any further with that now if you look over here I'm gonna turn this around this is the bottom of the area where there's actually that, that little housing or cover on top that hides the solenoid mechanism and you can see I repainted that so that they're very bright they use fold over tabs instead of spot welding it together which makes sense if you ever need to get apart again and I'm gonna actually bend those tabs out and expose the solenoid and the actuating mechanism for the switch track and give people a good idea of what's going on in there so that'll be on my okay next. now here you can see I carefully bent up the little tabs that hold the metal housing to the top. See that little red light there? That's my video camera on. But you see it's inevitable that you're going to put a little bit of a dimple in that uh, pressed metal on the, uh, the, the bottom plate, or excuse me, the top plate here. And uh, you just got to be very careful. I use a little, little flathead screwdriver right here very very small tip if I can get it in here uh, and I started working that around and then after I, I uh, got the tabs up a little bit I used some really good needle nose pliers these ones happen to be pistol grip so that's good ergonomically and then I bent those the rest of the way so now that uh, top is ready to come off okay well let me see where it's at and again I bent the tabs over flip the top over and and just carefully get that thing out. There we go. And there is your actual mechanism that switches your track. Basically, you have a two sided, uh, kind of a crude hand wound, it looks from the factory solenoid system. And basically, you have a, a three wire system here, and it just changes uh, polarity basically. And what happens is it, you know, it magnetizes this thing because of the windings. And the, uh, depending on which button you press on your controller, it pushes this little arm out that has a 90 degree bend on it and pulls it back in. Okay, out and back in. Now if I kind of zoom out a little bit here, you can actually see the track moving with that arm. Okay, out and in. And if you'll notice, I'm going to pick this up for a close-up, that at the ends of these these uh, metal plates here, I'm going to really try to get tight in here so we can see it, but there's a little bit, I'm going to try to point to it because it's hard to see. The closer I get, it's, it, this thing's not staying in focus. But there is a little area of horizontal slot here. Okay, At the end of that, you see, of course, you've got this diagonal slot, but at the end of it, there's a, a little horizontal slot, and that is where the track locks in at, okay? When that solenoid makes its stroke with this little arm here, if it doesn't pull in all the way, I know some people are saying they are having a problem with that, if it doesn't pull in all the way, what happens is, like you've got a tired transformer, or these windings are a little cooked, and it just pulls the arm to there, for example, when your train comes by, the track's not locked in, but when you when you have a little bit more power to these, or uh, as someone had suggested, something with uh, some capacitance, a, a capacitor system, and that pulls all the way over like it's supposed to, you hear it almost clicks in, the track is locked. See, I'm tugging on that pretty good and it doesn't move. And again, it works the same way here. It needs to make the full stroke, again, so that track doesn't move, okay? And I'm going to actually show you the difference because I have a, a really old, like a 1941 transformer. I'm going to show you the difference between that and the uh, the difference between using something static uh, voltage, something that I had b actually built, and show you the difference of how much that locks in. So that'll be on our next set.